In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, dear fellow redeemed by the blood of Christ. I want to be God, and you do as well. In fact, I'd make the argument that all people want to be God because all people want to be in absolute control of their lives. They think they know what's best for them. They think they know what paths they should follow. They think they know exactly how their life should go. I think that way. You think that way. We all think that way. And oftentimes, not always, let me make that clear, but oftentimes... That desire to be God and to be in complete control of our lives, oftentimes that comes out when we ask God the question, why? For look at our text. In our text, our Old Testament lesson, we meet the prophet Jeremiah. And the prophet Jeremiah was a very faithful man who lived during extreme times. He lived during the siege and the fall of Jerusalem. So Jeremiah had the unenviable task of going to the people of Jerusalem and telling them that their city was going to be destroyed and they were all going to be led into exile into Babylon because they had rejected the one true God and followed idols instead. You can only imagine how popular, or lack thereof, that made the prophet Jeremiah. Who would want to hear a message that they're going to be destroyed because of how wicked and evil they've been? No one wants to hear that message. In fact, oftentimes that message just made the people of Jerusalem angrier. An anger they directed right at the Lord's prophet, Jeremiah. Do you know some of the struggles that Jeremiah faced during his life? Jeremiah was rejected by his very own family. He was told never to marry, meaning that as he lived on this earth, he was often alone without anybody there to comfort him here on earth. He was falsely accused many times, threatened with death on multiple occasions. He was publicly humiliated, thrown into a muddy cistern, and perhaps worst of all, Throughout the majority of Jeremiah's ministry, it seemed like the wicked were prospering while the righteous were struggling. And all this happened simply because Jeremiah was remaining faithful to the Lord and preaching what the Lord told him to preach. And so in our text, Jeremiah begins to complain to God a little bit. He couldn't understand why these things were happening to him. For he said to the God, Your word came to me, and I devoured them. Your word became my joy and the delight of my heart. He said to God, I didn't sit with the party goers, nor did I celebrate them. I sat alone because your hand was heavy upon me. You see, with those words, Jeremiah was trying to convince God, look at how faithful I've been. And then Jeremiah gets to his complaint, to the real question he wants to ask God. He says, if I've been so faithful... Why is my pain unending? Why is my wound incurable, refusing to heal? Will you be as deceptive as an intermittent stream to me, like a source of water that a person can't depend on? You see, if Jeremiah were God, if he were in complete control of his life, he would not have faced all those struggles. If he were in control of his life, not only would the people have listened to him and not rejected the Lord his God, but he wouldn't have faced all those difficult situations either. And so in our text, he couldn't help but ask God the question, why? For he just couldn't understand why it seemed like the Lord wasn't blessing him, why it seemed instead as if the Lord was somehow punishing him, even though he couldn't figure out what he had done wrong. And have you been there? Have you been where Jeremiah was in our text? Have you begun to complain to the Lord saying, why? Because you just can't understand why your life is going the way it is. For like Jeremiah, you devour the word of God because it brings great joy to your heart, proven by the fact that you've gathered here this morning. 
Like Jeremiah, you haven't always joined in with sinners around you, but have done your best to give glory to God, even if that means you're an outcast in society. And yet, what happens? Like Jeremiah, you still face struggles. And I'm not just talking about the struggles from COVID or the social unrest that everybody is dealing with in this country now, but I'm really talking about your own personal struggles. Struggles that no one else may even know that you have. Those are sometimes the hardest struggles to bear. They can be in your marriage or other relationships in your family. They can be health problems or mental problems due to the stress and anguish and anxiety of the busyness of life. They can be from fear or loneliness or perhaps worst of all, guilt over a sin that you committed in the past and you can't get out of your brain. But whatever the case is, I know you all have struggles. Struggles that sometimes are hard to bear. Struggles that sometimes lead you to cry out as Jeremiah did. Why? For like Jeremiah, you can ask, why is my pain unending? Like Jeremiah, you can ask, why is my wound refusing to heal? Like Jeremiah, at times you can feel like the Lord is an intermittent stream. A source of water you can't depend on. And that's a very visual analogy, right? You all know what a mirage is. A mirage is when the sun reflects off the sand in the desert, making it seem like there's a nice, beautiful oasis there. And that can make people get excited as they're going to rejoice. They get a nice, refreshing drink of water, only to become disappointed because it's a mirage. It's not really there. And oftentimes, that's the way it may seem to our eyes as the Lord's promises are to us. For when we're struggling with life, we hear the Lord's promises and we rejoice because we know we're going to get such hope. We feel like we're going to get refreshed and then, and then the struggles still continue and continue and maybe even get a little worse. And so it's easy for us to break down as Jeremiah did and ask, why, why are these things happening to me? Have you been there? I've been there. If you're being honest with yourself, I'm sure you've been there as well. Jeremiah was there in our text. And when we get to that point, crying out to the Lord, why, instead of trusting in him, that's when it's very helpful for us to remember who is God. It's not you. It's not me. None of us is God. Instead, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is God. He alone is in control of all things, and that's exactly the way it has to be. As proof of that, let's jump to our gospel lesson for just a second. You see, Jesus began to show uh, his disciples exactly what he came into this world to do. He told his disciples that he must suffer and that he must die at the hands of wicked men. And Simon Peter, the same Simon Peter who had just made that beautiful confession that we heard about last week, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, that Simon Peter pulled Jesus aside and he said, may you receive mercy, Lord, this shall never happen to you. You see, Peter couldn't figure out with his human wisdom how it would be a good thing for Jesus to undergo such suffering and death. But Jesus responded by saying, get behind me, Satan. You are a snare to me, because you are not thinking the things of God, but the things of men. Do you see why it's a good thing that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is God, and not you, or me, or any other human being in this world? For what do we human beings think of? We think of the things of men. We use our human wisdom to think of human things, because we are all human beings. It's what Peter was doing in that gospel lesson. It's why he pulled Jesus aside, for he couldn't figure out with his puny little brain how someone suffering and dying at the hands of wicked men could be a good thing. But God's wisdom could. For by the wisdom of God, 
He knew that it was only by his son suffering and dying at the hands of wicked men that our sins could be forgiven, that salvation could be won, and that the gates of heaven could be opened for all of us. It's why the suffering and death of Jesus was a good thing. Even if our human logic can't figure that out on our own. And if that's the case with Jesus' cross, if his cross is only a good thing when we are using godly wisdom, not our natural human wisdom, if that's the case with Jesus' cross, well then, my dear Christian friends, it's going to be the same with your crosses, with your struggles that you bear. They will be a good thing for you by godly wisdom, not by human wisdom. For as Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. In fact, whoever wants to save his life, meaning have an easy life here on earth, he will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, meaning suffering for Christ, he will find it. And as proof of how true of a statement that is, let's go back to the prophet Jeremiah. Remember, the prophet Jeremiah was asking God that question, why? Because he couldn't figure out with his human wisdom why he was suffering so much. Did you catch how the Lord responded to him? After talking about faithfulness and repentance, the Lord said these words. He said, I will make you like a bronze wall to this people. They will fight against you, but they will not overcome you. Because I am with you to save you and rescue you, declares the Lord. I will rescue you from the hand of the wicked, and I will deliver you from the grasp of the ruthless. You see, Jeremiah didn't have the whole picture when he was crying out to God, why? He was thinking about human things with human wisdom, not godly things with godly wisdom. And so the Lord had to come down to Jeremiah. And the Lord had to reveal his wisdom to Jeremiah, saying that these struggles that he was facing, and they were quite the struggles, they would never overwhelm him because he, the Lord, was with him. And he, the Lord, would work through all these struggles to rescue him, deliver him, and save him. And that's exactly what happened to Jeremiah. For do you know where Jeremiah is right now as we speak? He's in the glory of heaven. Experiencing more joy than we can ever imagine. No longer asking that question, why? But realizing that the Lord guided his life right where it needed to be so that he could re reach that blessed place. And the same is true with you. You see, we don't have the whole picture when we cry out to God, why? Why are these things happening to me? We're using human wisdom to think about human things and how can we not? We're human beings. And so God himself has to come down to us, which is what he's doing right now through word and sacrament. He has to reveal his wisdom to us and remind us that these struggles that we face here on earth, some of which are very, very difficult, they will never overwhelm us. Instead, the Lord promises to be with us and he promises that through these struggles, he will be at work to save us, to rescue us, and to deliver us, just as he did with the prophet Jeremiah. And in the end, that's the answer to all those why questions we ask God. It's because God is God, and we are not. And so God knows, in his infinite wisdom, he knows exactly where our life needs to go so that we can one day be with him for all eternity in heaven. Human wisdom will never figure that out, but that's okay. Because godly wisdom can. 
For just as godly wisdom figured out how Christ's cross could be a good thing for us, so also godly wisdom has figured out how all the struggles or crosses we bear in our life are a good thing for us as well. And so we let God be God. He's the one who is all-knowing, not you or me. He's the one who has infinite wisdom, not you and me. And best of all, he's the one who has amazing love, not you or me. And so we let God be God, knowing that he is in complete control of our life. And while that does mean that sometimes with our human wisdom, we won't be able to figure out why we are enduring such struggles, It also does mean, dear friends in Christ, that those struggles will never overwhelm you. But rest assured that your Lord will always be at work through good times and in bad to rescue you, to save you, and to deliver you for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as we sing the created me as is found in the bulletin.